guys, welcome to my coffee show, my name is Jack and today we have a big one. Today we are comparing two of my favorite grinders, DF83 with high uniformity burst and we put it against, yes, flat max to the video that we have been waiting for since I got flat max to, which is like three weeks ago. When you look at them side by side, my god, that's such a huge difference. DF83 made in China, it got that nice round shape. Just looking at both of them, I probably would say that DF83 looks a bit better. Cafetec Flat Max too. You have to get used to those squarish shapes, a kind of more industrial design. Size-wise, they're about the same. It looks like Cafetec is slightly taller, footprint about the same. The huge difference in the weight. DF83, 10.7 kg, Cafetec almost 15 kg. There are certain things that I don't like about DF83. The main thing is that electric wire on the side and also that electric wire is not secured so at some point especially if you move that grinder a lot it might get damaged but overall when you touch it since I got it I was so impressed how good looking it is how well built it is well it's a great grinder and the price relatively low if you are looking for some like a mid-range grinders consider DF83 this one is with the high uniformity burst so you have to pay extra not sure if high uniformity bursts are worth uh, 300 dollars or so apart from the price and the look the main difference here is the size of the burst DF83 comes with a, well, obviously 83 millimeter burst Cafetec Flat Max 2 has two sets of burrs. So there is that conical pre-breaker that crushes the beans and then slowly feeds them into the main burrs. The main burrs are 98 millimeters shuriken burrs. You can choose from a few different options. There is also a difference in the engine. DF83 550 watts of power AC engine. Because of that lighter body and powerful engine, when you start it, it can jump, it can move slightly. Cafetec Flat Max 2, it's got a different kind of engine. It's a brush less DC motor made in Japan. It's geared 10 to 1. Power of the engine itself is 200 watts but because it's geared it can reach up to 2000 watts of power. You can also regulate the RPMs here. It is designed to be slow. The burrs are designed for that lower RPMs. That's why they make their own burrs. You cannot even buy them unless you are an owner of the Cafetec Max. Because they recently put that pre-breaker we've been told that we should not really open the grinder so the cleaning of it it will be a bit more tricky think about it you use rdt so there is always some water in the chamber especially now there is very hot eventually it will develop a kind of a smell a noise difference without any coffee flat max on 400 rpms df83 now let's grind 18 grams of coffee for espresso we do hot start on both of them differences here. DF83, if you want to buy it, just go online, choose the grinder, you have two different colors and you buy it and in the next few days you probably will get it. Now there's a version 2 available, I have a version 1 but I modified it slightly. Cafetec, because they produce it in a small batches, because it's hand assembled, it takes time. So if you pre-order it today, you probably will have to wait like six months to get this grinder. If you want to change the colors, you have to pay extra and it's not just pennies it's a hundreds of dollars extra even the wooden top you get that nice wooden top with df83 as a standard for wooden top for the flat max you have to pay what 60 70 dollars because the cafetec is hand assembled the burrs are already aligned to within 10 microns or whatever each grinder is tested before they send it to you so you know that when you get it it will be as good as it should be df83 you may be more or less lucky buy one wasn't that bad when you get high-end grinder you pay for that attention to the details that extra quality everything it's rated for thousands of hours of work bearings are rated for like over four thousand pounds of coffee burrs are alpha coated i have no idea about the quality of the internals of df83 probably still very good but we would think that cafetec flat max would be better both of those grinders comes with few accessories so df83 you get a hopper you 
get a catching cup with the collar. Now I think they come with the metal cup, but this one is still okay. You get a collar that it is okay, but I don't use it. You get a nice glass RDT bottle with DF83, the bottle is plastic. And yes, you have to use RDT on both of them. With Cafetech you also get WDT tool. And then you get that dosing cup, <laughs> high-end dosing cup. Make your own conclusions, I complained long enough about it. Both of those grinders can grind for anything from a really, really fine uh, espresso all the way to the pour over French press. But Cafetech is designed mostly for espresso. So even that scale is for espresso only. If you want to go for the pour over, you would have to go over the scale or maybe you would have to put another sticker on the grinder just for the pour over. With DF83, all the settings are clearly visible. The scale is all around and you get also a nice grind indicator. Something that is kind of missing in the Max 2 is you get a sticker, bloody sticker. You, you only get a one sticker, so you don't even get a set of stickers. Yeah, it's not a problem to make your own stickers, but still, that would be a nice touch if they gave you maybe a few more stickers or maybe if they find a better solution for a grind indicator. Now is that part of the video that is the most subjective, but also the most interesting. That's me tasting the coffee, doing the blind taste. So I have that apparatus here. I will put the glasses here, rotate and without looking I will be tasting. Underneath each cup there will be a sticker. Number one is for uh, flat max. Number two is for DF83. For espresso we will use a La Marzocco Liba style profile on Descent as we normally do. And today we will go for the Caro coffee roasters from uh, Ireland. And this particular coffee is from Rwanda. By the way, it's always a good time to click like and subscribe to the channel. So the shots are ready. Purposely I don't look at the shots because there was a difference in a crema. Cheers! Marmalade, neat finish. The flavor notes, they hit you, then they, they disappear. Body, not watery, but not thick either. There is a sharpness. I would say some oranges, some sweetness, caramel. Notes are sharp, the shot is bright. There is a little bit of the bitterness, but it kind of fits with the, all the other flavor notes. I haven't tried this coffee before. It is interesting, but I wouldn't say the flavor notes are my favorite. What I'm happy with here is that the flavor notes they describe on the back, you can find it here. And there is that sharpness in the flavors. Let's taste the other one. Cheers. Hmm, interesting. Honestly, if, like if someone took the brightness away. The flavor notes, the same. Some sourness, some, some fruitiness, winey fruits, little bit of the bitterness. But it, it's like if someone took that sparkle away. The other shot was like if you look at the coffee through the magnifying glass. I wouldn't say I love this coffee, okay? Neither of those shots. But the previous shot, it gave me that sharpness. By itself, not bad, but you can feel the difference when you put them next to each other. So let's reveal the shot that gave me overall sharper and better notes. Have a look. It's number one. It is number one. Yeah, it, 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 it has to be. It's a completely different experience here. And just to prove you, this should be number two. Now I will use my magic and I will put refractometer readings uh, on the screen. Okay, so now it's time for the pour over. We're going to use coffee from Amsterdam, coffee from Rwanda. Once more, we will use a rock brewer here. Okay, the cups are ready. I try to keep them at the same temperature so they're not immediately obvious. There is some sourness. So they say candied orange, I would say yes. Juicy, jammy, yes. Slightly boring as well. And let's taste the other one. Cheers. We have a problem here. <laughs> Exactly the same. I had to double check. Maybe I use the same grinder for both of them. No, cannot distinguish which is which. Honestly, guys, I, I, I cannot say. Look, there were full cups. I tried and tried, keep washing my mouth. They both orangey jammy, both a little bit boring. Okay, I have to choose something. In this cup, if I look very, very deep, I can get some other flavors. Not sure exactly what they are, but they are pleasant. So I will choose this cup. But the difference 
fragrance is maybe 5%. This one, it's slightly more sour. This one, slightly sweeter. So let's see the cup that it's 5% better. I'm curious as much as you are, guys. No idea. Okay, so the Cafetec. But you know what? Everything that it's not a clear win for Cafetec, it's already a win for DF83 because of that massive price difference. <laughs> okay, guys, so here we have it. I'm slightly confused by the results, but here are my final conclusions. If you are looking for one of the best grinders for espresso, you may consider Cafetec Flat Max 2. I know at the beginning I had few complaints here and there, but since I lower the grind speed to 200, I'm suddenly getting more of that sharpness, more of those clear notes. You are not missing anything if you have DF83 with those high uniformity bursts. But next to something like espresso from Cafetec Max, there is a difference. You have to be that kind of espresso connoisseur to fully appreciate the difference. But the difference there is. Brightness, sharpness, clear notes. Now the pour over. Honestly, before I did that test, I was expecting Cafetec to be a clear winner, that it will destroy DF83, because I had some of the best uh, pour overs using Cafetec, different coffee, but using the Cafetec Flat Max 2. But today I can only judge what's in front of me, and today the differences were tiny. Once you jump from that DF83, which is a great grinder, to the high-end grinder, you only get a little bit, but it's that little bit that we coffee geeks we are chasing for. Guys, if you have any of those grinders, please share your experience. What do you think about them? I would love to taste those other bars, MP or uh, Sweet Lab Sweet bars for DF83. Who knows, We maybe with those bars the results would be different. Plenty more things coming. I will be comparing my flat marks with other grinders. I will be comparing DF83 with other grinders and we'll be doing other things as well. So don't forget, click like, subscribe. But for today, thank you very much for watching. My name is Jack. This is my coffee show and hopefully I will see you soon. Thank you. Bye.